your up garu okay a very energetic good afternoon to all the dignitaries and friends present here my name is gaurav verma and i work as a scientific officer with baba atomic research center first of all i would like to thank all the organizers of icon india especially ritesh vikrant for helping me out set up this particular uh i had some technical issues and they have, they were able to help me out in this so i would like to thank all, uh, thank them a lot so today i am presenting my topic which is infiniteness of finite elements explored through phoenix first of all i would like to start my presentation with this a famous quote by a very famous computer scientist from massachusetts institute of technology he said finite element is an art to predict the future his name was claus jorgen baum is a very famous man so here we'll talk about what is finite elements and what is infinite about it what basically is the what it, what infiniteness here what, what we mean by that so this is the outline of my presentation i'll be talking about the infiniteness of finite elements its exploration through the phoenix package we'll be doing some case studies here first case study will be on the solution of the heat equation using the phoenix package secondly the second uh, case study would be the solution for the equation of linear elasticity and and the finally there will be a summary of what we have presented and what we have talked about here. so as you can see this is what do you mean by infiniteness infinite infiniteness in finite elements basically means its infinite applications as you can see on this page there are four applications i have shown of finite elements have you ever wondered basically how when car manufacturers basically when they design a car they build a car and they when they before basically uh, selling it to the market people how they basically arrive at such a such a beautiful optimum design they basically use this particular tool called finite element analysis this particular tool finite element analysis is based on a finite element method it's a mathematical tool which is Have which have been used by softwares to to use for physical problems basically. As you can see here, I am showing you four applications. First of all, in the on my left top, you can see a car having the doing the having the results solutions of displacement and with uh, having a, a crash analysis. And for the uh, top right, you can see it's a pressure vessel, basically tank upon which when you apply some external loads. Color pressures, how it deforms. These colors, the variation of colors, they basically tell about the regions of criticality. As you can see, the red color shows that region is more critical, and the blue color, which is on the top side, as you can see on the right side and right side of the region, it means it's of less criticality. Now, on the left, you can see a uh, electromagnetic. Uh, it's, it's a transformer basically, and using finite element model they are trying to basically estimate what are the temperatures one can achieve to, uh, in this transformer when it's working and on my uh, bottom right you can see the model of a heart it's a finite element model of the heart what is happening here is uh, the heart is pumping blood so they have exactly modeled how a human heart is and using a fluid structure interaction module they are basically showing what is basically happening here how the heart pumps the blood so this uh, finite elements basically it's it, it has a name word it is a word called finite in its naming but it has infinite applications it is used almost in every practical engineering application even people from science background use it so it may have a name finite elements but its applications are infinite so basically but now we'll talk about what is finite element method what basically is finite element method. so mathematical interpretation if you take it is a numerical technique for finding approximate solutions to boundary value problems for partial differential equations basically what it means is that to have a physical system you would like to know what what solutions you can achieve For that, you have to make a mathematical model, and then you have to solve that mathematical 
model using some mathematical tools like matrices and all those stuff and then you have to arrive at a solution and physically what does it has what physical interpretation it has basically the content what physical interpretation it gives is the continuous physical model is divided into multiple finite pieces called the elements and the laws of nature are applied on the generic element the results are then recombined to represent the continuum basically what happens if you have a 3d structure assume let us assume we have a book it's a 3d book it's a rectangular uh, it's a basically a, a rectangular cuboid you can see it's a, uh, basically any book you take it, it has a big volume it can be broken into multiple small 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 volumes 3d volumes and those 3d volumes can have uh, can be divided into multiple as you see we are divided into multiple 3d volumes you can uh, what if you want to analyze uh, like uh, if you put a load on that particular uh, particular book like you put a weight of your uh, like a paper weight you put on that book how that load of the paper weight will have an effect on the book the book is i'm taking just as an example how will that have an effect this can be computed using finite elements so what we do you here i'll show you the next slide basically what a uh, uh, finite element method is basically we are, we are talking about basically uh, what uh, what is the relationship between finite element method and finite element analysis in simple terms finite element method is a method for dividing up a very complicated problem into small elements that can be solved in relation to each other it is applied to those problems which either have complicated geometries loadings and material properties where analytical solutions are difficult to achieve for example as i told you earlier we have taken a book and we are putting a paper weight on it as we are putting a paper weight on it what is happening is it is getting pressed at at some location where the paper weight is in contact with the book so now the you see this book is a very uh, simple structure it's a basically a rectangle extruded so it's a, it's a kind of a cuboid but if you have a very diff uh, very difficult geometry like a car where you have a lot of contours and a lot of protrusion and extrusion and all those stuff then using basic uh, mathematical laws and physics uh, physics uh, techniques which you have learned in school and colleges may not be applicable and if you want to get very good results like more accurate have to go towards accuracy then we have to use some mathematical tool to achieve those and those mathematical tool has to be solved using computers hand calculations may give you just few numbers but you have to be more accurate when you are uh, uh, going for a, a very uh, something very important something very costly something very uh, critical so that particular thing is achieved using finite elements as you can see finite element analysis is the application of finite element method for performing numerical simulations now i'll fix the yeah ah as you can see how the finite element analysis works i'm talking about this here you see you have a physical system physical system like as i told as i told you about uh, a book having a weight on it or example a car moving at a speed of 60 uh, 60 km per hour on the road this car is basically going to see some uh, drag forces because of the air which is pa passing over it passing through it basically so you have this physical system it has to be modeled mathematically in order to use mathematical tools it has to have a simple mathematical representation how will you idealize the whole physical continuum into a mathematical model that needs to be done then after that that mathematical model is further discretized into more simpler uh simpler elements using finite element methods and then you find solution for those discrete model using the finite element tools and other numerical techniques you find the solution for those and once if you see if this okay then it's fine and otherwise if you find that some there are some more tweaking required then you again remodel the whole car thing with more uh, intricacies and you come out with a solution and it's an iterative process until unless you are very much satisfied 
and you have a uh, gut feeling that now this design will work and it's okay and you have done a lot of tests on it also so have to validate whatever you have done is correct or not then you have achieved your solution so how we have gone through we have taken a physical system which is basically a car it can be a let's, let's take a car we have uh, uh, we have modeled the, that car physically on a computer let's take a computer and we have taken we have modeled that car then we take the whole model and divide that a particular model into small small elements and then what we do using those uh, you solve for each element you solve whatever the loadings are that are on that element and then you get a solution for it and then what you do ultimately also all the elements you combine those solution and you get the solution for the whole car probability so this is how the finite element basically works now how does finite elements uh, elements as i as i, as I uh, spoke earlier how it works basically in finite element analysis the continuum or the physical system or the model is represented as an assembly of smaller subdivisions called finite elements and together they are called as a mesh as you can see on my right is a small uh, geometry which i have divided into number of small pieces or uh, these are basically uh, rectangular pieces as you can see these are called meshes each rectangular piece is called an element and together they are called a mesh these elements are interconnected at nodes at the points where they are connected those are called nodes and basically we find solution for those node values the nodes usually lie on the element boundaries and are shared with adjacent or the neighboring connected elements the mesh is programmed to contain the material and structural properties which define the behavior of the structure under certain loading condition as i told you when you make the model of the car the car is made, could be make made up of some kind of steel some steel alloy would be so you have to put that material property of that uh, steel on that model so that when you apply a loading it it, it has an effect of that particular uh, material you see because otherwise you don't put any material you won't get any results it's just like putting something uh, some some loading on something which has no property that, that that should not happen you have to put a material model what kind of material it is it is it a steel is it aluminum is it something else is it what whatever it is so you have to put a material model on that and you put some loading loading could be a force or could be a pressure or could be some kind of a displacement displacement means some kind of a deviation you put so that could be that has to be put on it and then you are able to get a solution for it so so now we will say how this finite element analysis works how it works basically now these nodes are distributed with certain density throughout the model depending on the anticipated resolution level on a particular area the mesh is programmed to contain the material and structural properties which define the behavior of the structure under certain loading conditions the variation of the field variable it could be temperature displacement pressure velocity etc in the model is defined determined by approximating the variation of the field variables inside an element by a simple interpolation function also called the basis function basically what is saying is saying here that uh, what you want to determine in that particular car model if you take and you have put some uh, some material on it and you are applying some loading what do you want to determine in that thing it's like we do you want to determine what the displacements are going to be like what deformation it can take for example if you take a car model and you it you are, you are traveling on a 60 km per hour speed and hit the barrier you hit some like a crash test basically what we do so what do you want to determine do you want to determine how much energy that is absorbed how much deformation that is happening on the car or something that is your a field variable the primal variable you call it. and that you have to determine that's what is mentioned here and since you have put you have taken appropriate mathematical mo model to model particular this thing you have taken the correct material properties you have applied correct loadings basically the pressure load of the force load you, you get the correct value of energy absorbed by the car or the displacement that the car is facing or seeing or whatever you can achieve that using finite elements
mathematical differential equation of any order cannot be solved. That's very difficult for, and particularly for very complex geometries, it's very difficult to do that. So what you do, you simplify that physical model. Sorry, if you simplify that uh, uh, differential equation, what you do is basically you uh, simplify it in bringing bring the order down. Like if you have a second order differential equation, you bring the order to the first order, so that it becomes easy for you. That that uh, lowering of the order, that is what is called the weak form. The uh, original equation which you have is called the strong form, and when we lower the order, it's called the weak form. Now what happens? You uh, you use this weak form for finite element uh, met uh, uh, methods as the basic governing equation for which you are going to solve the uh, solve the sol solve the solution for which you are going to get the results. So that's that that's the weak form that I'm talking about. So, and how do you solve it? You apply a lot of mathematical tools like you make matrices, matrices, and uh, you find out stiffness matrix and all those stuff. That's are quite mathematical terms. Uh, so, what you want to happen is uh, you take you form these matrix equations and all those. You find for each node, as I told you, that each element at its boundary have multiple nodes connected to it. So, you find those values at each node and you try to find. What are the uh, solutions like the displacement, energy, and whatever you want uh, is uh, is the value on that particular node that you try to find out. Next, uh, so uh, I'll tell you next thing: how this finite element analysis helps designers, basically the new age designers who are coming after doing some uh, mechanical engineering and uh, civil engineering after they have basically engineering courses, undergraduates or Anyone in first part, people from people from R and D of a car company, or uh, uh, like in in a, my particular organization, like uh, Baba Atomics Center, where we have uh, we make uh, nuclear reactors basically. So how that helps? So what happens is this finite element in, in helps that it makes our life very simple. It somewhat replaces the need for an extensive and expensive physical experiments because for each thing you cannot do an experiment. Like if you want to. Uh, if you want to uh, model, like for a car, you do crash test analysis. That is okay. But for like a rocket, will you? Uh, how much? How much can, can experiment can you do? You cannot uh, really fly a real uh, a real size rocket and crash it somewhere and see what can happen to the material of it. So there, you do a scale down test. That's okay. And parallelly, those tests are compared with the results of the finite elements. And seen how these results are. Secondly, it is easily applied to complex irregular shaped objects composed of different materials and having complex boundary conditions. Like, uh, if you have very complex geometry, like very different, difficult contours, hand held, hand solved uh, problems, uh, and uh, using hand calculations or calculators, it will be very difficult to get accurate results. You might get a somewhat closer result with. Uh, 15 to 20 percent accuracy that could be there, but if you want a very accurate uh, result, you might have to. You may won't be it won't be possible using pen and paper. You might have to use some numerical technique. And secondly, it is applicable to both linear and non-linear problems. What do, do you mean by that? Like problems where input and output behave linearly. Like whatever a given input, if you're Given output is linearly proportional to it, that is called a linear problem. For example, uh, uh, you can take uh, any example like, uh, like uh, particularly if you see if uh, on the book, the more uh, the, the early problem we have, which we have taken now, uh, uh, we have taken a book, we have put a, uh, a paper weight on it. The more you apply, the more heavy weight you paper weight you apply on the book, the uh, more deformation the book will see. A more depression kind of thing with the book will see. That is the linearity. Non-linear problems are much are a bit difficult, difficult and different, where the relation is not linear. For example, fluid. Those problems are highly non-linear. And this and this finite element analysis is applied to wide variety of problems like solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, electromagnetics, biomechanics, heat transfer, etc. So it has really a wide application. Now we'll talk about Phoenix software, this Phoenix package, 
which we adopted. First of all, it's an open source package. It's a Python based uh, software which basically solves the partial differential equations using Python and C++ libraries. Basically, we have a lot of libraries made for this and we basically, if you want to do some calculation or we do a particular type of a, pro uh, sol a problem, solve a solve problem, then we particularly import a particular module, a particular library, and then uh, using those library, whatever tools are there in those library, we try to find out the solution. And then uh, if you talk about Phoenix, it is an automated programming environment for differential equations. Basically, what Phoenix does is, I'll explain in the further slides how it helps us. Phoenix uh, provides a high-level user interface which allows easy reproduction of mathematical formulation and rapid implementation of high-performance solvers. Uh, so it's that. Then Phoenix was basically the Phoenix was created in 2003 under Phoenix Research and Software Project in collaboration with Simula Research Laboratory, University of Cambridge, University of Chicago, Texas Technical University, ATH Royal Institute of Technology, and some more uh, institutes. Okay, uh, I got a message. Slides are not changing. But I'll try to wait. I'll put, uh, re broadcast myself so that. Sugar, some, you know, we, we are expecting some glitches sometimes, you know, we are all connected from home, so that's all right. I think it's now it's visible. Yeah. I hope so. Go on. So, basically what's happening is, uh, this uh, Finnish platform was created uh, with, uh, uh, basically with, uh, it's a, it was a project taken up in, in, in the year 2003 by some laboratories and technical universities around the world, and they together developed it, and it's an open source package. It's uh, freely available in the internet and it has literally wide and very, it's very powerful, first of all, and it has a lot of, epic, it, it solves a lot of problems, physical problems, physical and engineering problems. So this is the basic architecture of the Phoenix application. You can see on the left hand side, you have this Phoenix application in the yellow box. Then you have this interface, green color it's box you can see. That interface is Dolphin. So basically, what Dolphin is, is called Full Form is Dynamic Object Oriented Library for Finite Element Computations. It's a basically C++ Python library, and it is a primary user interface. Then you again have other core components like UFL, FFC, UFC. These are the core. These are the core components. These are the libraries which are part of the Phoenix application. But then there are external libraries like NumPy, which many of you are familiar with, PetSC, Ubilas, SlepC, UMFPAG, and so on, VTK and all this. VTK is a particular value uh, of uh, image. So you have a lot of these uh, libraries we have to import so as to get the results. Uh, now, what is the advantage of Phoenix? Phoenix basically is an automated FEM. Automated FEM means, basically, as I told you earlier, that we have elements and we try to find out, we have nodes, and there we uh, uh, basically get, uh, we find out the solution at those nodes. So what happens that we make all these uh, matrix, uh, matrices are formed, basically, when you use uh, Phoenix. But however, when you're using Phoenix, uh, don't have to, uh, when you're coding, when you don't have to make all these matrices and all this. It's like it's when you write the code and you the, using the weak form, it automatically gets it in that particular thing. Then we have this automated evaluation of variational forms, automated finite element assembly, automated adaptive error control, which has so many other advantages. You can see, see. these are the type of elements when you discretize a, a discretize a geometry, a 3D geometry, or a, li, a, a line geometry, or a surface geometry. These are the type of type of elements which are uh, which are used in Phoenix. Then some more elements are here presented here, as you can see. Now we'll do one uh, this thing. Uh, we'll do one uh, case study. We'll talk about how the Phoenix is applied, like uh, how the Phoenix works. 
basically uh, we are solving a poisson equation what poisson equation is basically that uh, it's a kind of a heat uh, uh, it's any kind of equation which is there like heat equation and you are putting some heat in a, a heat uh, like you have to take a plate and you heat it from the center how the heat is going to be distributed onto that particular uh, plate how the heat uh, temperature distribution is that can be uh, uh, basically uh, some form of poisson equation it's it is so that can be easily uh, being uh, is visible but we can solve it with that poisson equation and it can easily get the results then uh, you see like uh, and then you have the weak form basically that is a second order equation you uh, then uh, lower it down to a first order equation and you solve it using this uh, this much amount of coding is this this is a python code python format coding and uh, this much uh, amount of coding is required and you get the results basically how the temperature distribution is or whatever it is then again uh, this is the linear equation like uh, you take a beam you put some load in one end and you fix the beam on the other side and how the that beam is deflecting how the uh, behavior is that can be uh, basically uh, solved using uh, expressed using this uh, linear elasticity coding and you can uh, show it to matlab you can get results for this also this kind of uh, uh, coding would be required if again a uh, uh, pattern based and when you implement all these uh, this coding uh, uh, sort of programs then ultimately you get this solution like how that beam is deflecting you see how the beam deflected when i apply i fixed at one side and putting the loading on the other side this is the case some of the work done by us like this is the fuel assembly we try it's a nuclear fuel basically we uh, we try to find out the natural vibration using this fuel assembly so what we do is this is the fuel assembly called geometry you can see these are the uh, the ones which are striped rectangular these are called fuel pits so we try to find the natural frequency and we have done that using phoenix this is the approach we have used uh, the algebra diagram for the algorithm that we have used and we have tried out uh, try to find out this uh, solution like i'll show it here this is the fuel plates which are there we have tried out the natural frequency how the frequency what the frequencies are for each particular uh, plate for a given boundary condition or if the plate is uh, fixed on one side how the plate will behave what will be its frequency natural frequency how those things we have found out using uh, this phoenix software some more results are here can be seen uh, so this is summary that finite element analysis is one of the most widely used analysis techniques in engineering technology and applied sciences and its popularity is expected to grow many fold in the coming years finite element method is a mathematical tool for solving partial differential equations generally referred as pdes phoenix is a powerful open source package for solving pdes and was created with an aim of automated solution to mathematical models through finite element methods allowing easy reproduction of mathematical formulation and rapid implementation of high performance solvers here we have seen two kind of case studies uh where we have used phoenix to find the solution one was a kind of a heat equation and second was a elasticity equation so that's all these are the references i have taken literature references other source source for the images i have already mentioned in the slides so thank you thanks a lot hey gaurav a great session thank you yeah so yeah. could you also share your Uh, camera. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Okay. So we kind of initially face some tech issues and great job resolving it and getting oh, oh. back on the stage. Yeah. Hello? So quite quite an interesting topic. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I'm able to listen. Able to hear you. Cool, Gaurav. So, uh, I think we have quite a few interesting questions. Uh, yeah. Since we are out of time, maybe you could uh, answer them, Anzul. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just had one in question myself. Okay. So, what what the difference between uh, sweep pi and Phoenix? Which pi? Uh, S F E pi. There's a module sweep pi, right? That's also for F E S. uh this actually basically uh, uh first of all i didn't name the get the name of that particular software talking about phoenix and sweep pi 